Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. Uh, it is Saturday. It is January 13th, 2024. Hope all of you are having a great weekend so far today. I thought I would just take a few minutes to uh, jump on here and touch base, uh, share a few things that I saw uh, in the news uh, late last night or this morning I thought were uh, worthwhile to share with you. Uh, and I thought I would uh, take this opportunity to, if you're in uh, one of the uh, 50 states across this country or other parts of the world that are getting hammered with extremely cold uh, Arctic temperatures, uh, I thought I would come on here and rub this in a bit, uh, sitting in, uh, in about 65 degree weather here today. A uh, nice sunny day, uh, but look at if if you guys are in severe weather state, uh, please obviously take all precautions. Hopefully, uh, you have uh, pre prepared, done some due diligence to make sure that you have supplies in case there would be an extended uh, power outage or uh, or a, or um, or utilities uh, are out for a period of time. Hopefully, you have some food put back, uh, some extra water. Hopefully uh, you have enough uh, firewood uh, ready to go, things of that nature. Obviously, uh, some, some extra medications and medical supplies uh, in, in, uh, in your house in case that's needed. Uh, you never know what uh, the weather events are going to end up, uh, how bad they're going to end up being. Uh, so I uh, sitting here at my, I was out doing some errands today, and usually on the weekends I come by my mom's place, help her out, uh, do some uh, do some, uh, you know, some things around the place here. She's got a nice, cute little condo, sits on the golf course uh, here. It's a very nice uh, little setup. Uh, but she's older and she needs uh, help, you know, taking trash out, uh, dealing with, um, you know, just stuff around around the place, which I try to do every weekend. Uh, for those of you that have uh, elderly parents, I hope that you are um, doing the same, that you are making the effort. Uh, we all have very, very busy uh, schedules, but please make the effort uh, if, if, uh, if, if you can, if your parents are local to you and you can put that extra um, time in. Uh, and if you have kids, obviously you're going to be hoping that your kids do the same for you someday. Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for watching the videos. I appreciate the community we're building. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit the bell notification. And like we always talk about, share these videos with your family, your friends, uh, coworkers, colleagues, uh, loved ones, so we can continue to, continue to wake people up. Saw some articles today. We've talked on this show a lot about the, the, uh, the consumer debt levels in this country. And over the holidays, we did some videos about how the, the uh, consumers were uh, just running up their credit cards. They were putting things on buy now, pay later, uh, and basically spending money that they, uh, that they didn't and don't have. Well, now, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the credit card bills are coming due. And there's an article that came out of the Business Insider uh, yesterday. It says, Americans are missing credit card payments at the highest rate in a decade. So, it says, a report from the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia found credit and credit card delinquency rates have surpassed pre-pandemic levels with the share of balances 30 days past due hovering at the highest mark since 2012. Uh, you know, if you, if you go back uh, and, and Google what was happening in 2012 with the economy, uh, people were, were reeling from the crash, uh, the real estate crash in uh, 07, 08, 09, uh, the stock market crash, uh, and, you know, and so, you know, what was happening is people were falling late on their debts and their obligations. A lot of bankruptcies ensued thereafter. So we have to go back more than 10 years into the last, uh, to the, to the um, great financial crisis to see a time where credit card delinquencies uh, were this prevalent. Um, so in the second quarter of 2021, credit card delinquency rates were at historic lows. And we know that because the Fed, the Fed was giving out free money. Uh, everybody was uh, stacking that money, increasing their savings accounts. All that's dried up now. Uh, the pandemic money is gone. The handouts are gone. It says those figures have steadily climbed uh, the credit card delinquency rates since then. However, and this, however, the spending behaviors reflect greater consumer fragility, Philadelphia Fed economists said. Total revolving credit card balances have also increased from pandemic lows 
uh, these, uh, these economists said. In, uh, in a January 8th report from LendingTree, found the largest 100 U.S. metros, 29.6% of Americans were behind on at least one payment between July 1st and September 30th of 2023. Just over 20% of consumers had payments delinquent by 90 days or more. Um, folks, we've talked about this before. If, if you even miss, or we're tying this back into uh, your FICO score, your credit score, and how important that is uh, to maintain uh, your ability to access funds, to borrow money, uh, to continue to have credit cards, and to be able to operate in the society we operate in, uh, you have to maintain a, a good credit score. When you miss a credit card payment, even if 30 days late shows up on the credit report, and that is a major ding, ding against your score. If you go 60, 90 days late, um, you know, it, it reflects even worse. So these, uh, these numbers that are being reported here on credit card delinquencies are, are not surprising to me. It's an unfortunate reality of the, of the mindset and the mentality of the consumers in America today. Hopefully you're not one of those people. And if you are, hope, hopefully you are taking steps uh, to change your spending uh, habits. Uh, and when you do use a credit card, either pay, pay it off all in the first month if you can, or please just make sure that you're making those credit card payments on time. You need to pay the bills on time to show financial responsibility uh, uh, in, in this society. It's Like we said, it's very, very important uh, to your overall financial health. Uh, next article I saw talks about layoffs. We continue to see layoffs. Um, in 2023, I think I saw a figure of 305,000 positions were cut uh, by companies. And now we have 2024 uh, starting off uh, to, be, uh, to be a very uh, aggressive uh, pattern of layoffs. It's primarily right now dealing with the tech companies. It's, uh, this, one's, uh, this article is from uh, Forbes uh, last night. It says, hundreds of employees were cut from major tech companies this week, including Amazon, Google, and Duolingo. Says, and then it goes through, and I, and I thought this article did a real good job of summarizing several of the, of the uh, companies that have cut uh, people. Because sometimes this gets buried in the mainstream media because they don't want you to understand that these companies are laying people off, that they're reducing headcount, that they're, that they're pulling in, uh, their, uh, their, their, uh, they're tightening their belts. It says, Twitch, a live streaming site owned by Amazon, announced plans to cut 35% of its staff or 500 employees, according to CEO Dan Clancy in a blog Wednesday night. That same day, Amazon announced plans to cut several hundred employees at its Prime Video and MGM Studio division. On Wednesday, Google laid off hundreds of employees across several divisions, including its engineering and hardware teams, as well as employees developing its voice-operated virtual assistant. Uh, the sprinklers just came on in the background. Hopefully, it's not going to interfere too much with the audio here. Uh, language learning app Duolingo this week slashed 10% of its contract employees. Uh, not immediately clear how many workers this affects as this company starts to pivot towards AI for, uh, for content generation. Let me get to the next page of this article. There's more, more I wanted to share with you. Come on. There we go. Uh, Discord CEO Jason Citron announced this week that his platform will cut 17% of its workforce. And video game software developer Unity Software announced in a regulatory filing it will end one quarter of its, excuse me, it will cut one quarter, 25% of its staff, roughly 1,800 jobs as part of a restructuring plan. Um, we, I said a few minutes ago, more than 305,000 jobs uh, were cut uh, in, uh, in 2023, uh, the biggest of those was in July, uh, where, uh, trucking, uh, trucking, yellow trucking company went bankrupt and laid off 30,000 employees. Uh, just saw news, an article that came out yesterday, Citigroup, now I'm talking about the banking sector, Citigroup announced elimination of 20,000 jobs. Um, so folks, we've talked about this on this channel over and over about, if you have an employer, uh, if you are wholly reliant on getting a paycheck, 
uh, from your nine to five job and you don't have any other sources of income stream or any other self-reliant sources uh, of, of ways to generate income for you and your family, it would be a good idea for you to start contemplating putting some plan in effect this year, start a side gig, start a, um, a, a, a home-based business, uh, start some kind of business of your own, uh, do it the right way, don't leverage in with a bunch of debt, start, start slow and work your way into it. But start to capitalize on all the skills you have, bring everything to bear now because you're gonna need, in my opinion, we're gonna need these layers of self-reliance as we continue to bark, embark this year and see more companies laying off, seeing consumers struggle more, uh, seeing certain sectors of this economy continue to rise, the costs, health insurance costs, we talked about a couple days ago, the food costs are out of control. Uh, so consider that please, do it the right way, use a corporation or an LLC or some proper vehicle and entity uh, to insulate your, your, uh, your, your personal assets from, from business dealings. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the content. That's what I saw today. There was another, I believe, it wasn't really mainstream, but I believe there was another attack last night. The U.S. launched uh, uh, over in Yemen. Uh, I saw, I watched some of Greg Manorino's stuff. I think he mentioned it today. I saw a post from him. I couldn't find much about it on Zero Hedge or other news sources. Uh, but uh, that conflict continues to escalate. Let's stay vigilant here at home. Let's uh, have our head on a swivel, condition yellow at all times, uh, watch your surroundings. Again, I, uh, for all of you that are getting hit with some severe weather, uh, please be safe. Uh, and uh, I will see all of you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Bye.